Playing to win. Inside the video game industry continues. A little over a hundred years ago, in one of the first movies ever made, a cowboy aimed his six-shooter right at the audience and fired away point-blank. Obviously, violence in the media is nothing new. But video games are different. Their audiences can shoot back, and that gets a lot of people up in arms. ask people to come up with just a word that comes to mind when they when you mention video games almost all the time it's violent and yet if all we did was produce violent entertainment we wouldn't be on the verge of becoming the second largest entertainment industry in the world even in the earliest days of Atari it's aggressive the second round there was mayhem and destruction in video games up to a point we actually had a rule that sounds very quaint right now, so that you could uh, blow up a tank, you could blow up an airplane. But that you couldn't harm a, a humanoid figure. Um, and we stuck to it. That rule was broken in 1976 when one of Atari's competitors brought out Death Race. And the object of the game was to drive over pedestrians for points. Now, it sounds horrible and terrifying. The graphics of this, this is a couple years after Paul. Okay, you got blocks, you know, stick figures. The outcry over this game led to it being pulled off of uh, locations. It led to people not buying it. By the 90s, better graphics led to more realistic blood and guts. And the arcade hit, Mortal Kombat. He takes out your head and your spine's connected. Before long, both Nintendo and Sega announced plans to bring the game's trademark skull crushing and spine ripping into homes everywhere. But privately, the folks who brought the world Mario wondered if they could really get that down and dirty. Our standards were not to allow that blood, and we ended up uh, insisting that our licensee uh, take out the blood, and I think we ch changed the blood from red to green, something like that. <laughs> Sega, meanwhile, said, hey, we got, we got the real stuff, the real red blood. Whatever the color, Mortal Kombat's blood got Sega and Nintendo into real trouble. That I agree that everything that we've done has not been perfect. As a matter of fact... The game prompted the Senator hearing, Joseph Lieberman of Connecticut to hold hearings in 1993 on video game violence and its effects on children. I know that one place parents want us to draw the line is with violence in video games. This morning, the Software Publishers Association... With the government breathing down its neck, the industry decided to police itself, announcing the formation of the Entertainment Software Association and a game rating system. We provide empowering information that allows consumers to make informed choices. And we do it more comprehensively than any other entertainment industry does in terms of providing both content information and age guidance right on the package. Would you... Uh, but the same week the hearings began, <laughs> video game gore and violence were raised to new levels with the debut of Doom, the sci-fi horror title that established the first-person shooter genre. Players see everything through the eyes of the main character, a combat-hardened marine who uses everything from brass knuckles to rocket launchers in a blood-soaked battle against evil creatures from hell. For hardcore gamers, Doom was love at first kill. But after the 1999 Columbine High School massacre, video game critics called it a training course in murder. We 
found out that those boys were big Doom players. And they said that their, their massacre at their high school would be like a level of Doom. And people got very upset from that. It was the scapegoat. You know who else liked to play violent video games called Doom? Most of America. Most of the children in America. And yet they did not go crazy and shoot people. USC professor Peter Vorderer specializes in the psychology of entertainment. He's one of the experts who feel that video games could push children with violent impulses to act on their feelings. If that sort of behavior is encouraged by the game, and if somebody's ready to show that sort of behavior, then the impact is quite likely, yes. Not so, argues former Entertainment Software Association president Doug Lowenstein. If you look at the most independent and objective research out there, which has been done by governments, uh, which has been done by other organizations around the world, you find a great deal of skepticism uh, that there is any compelling research that uh, links playing violent games to aggressive behavior. But even industry veterans wonder about the effects of playing violent video games. After I've played a couple hours of a driving game, a racing game, and I get in my own car, I drive more aggressively. After I've played a couple hours of a violent game, I feel more hostile towards people. The issue was raised again in 2003 when an 18-year-old named Devin Moore went on a rampage in an Alabama police station, killing two police officers and a dispatcher. After he was captured, Moore reportedly said, quote, life is like a video game. Everyone's got to die sometime, end quote. Convicted in 2005, Moore, it turned out, had been playing one game day and night for months, the bestseller Grand Theft Auto. You want to shoot people and carjack them and take their cars? It's an integral part of the game. You're playing a criminal. Is it a reprehensible game in a lot of ways? Yeah. Would I ever let my kid play it? No. But my kid is going to play it. He is. How can he be so sure? Well, according to a recent survey, seven out of 10 children report playing M-rated games. 45% have purchased adult-rated titles despite store policies prohibiting sales to minors. Yes, it is. Grand Theft Auto. Step right up. How about a little coffee? And more than a few kids viewed this scene in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which prompted Senator Hillary Clinton to call for a federal investigation. The ability of our children to access pornographic and violent material on an M-rated video game is spiraling out of control. In 2005, Senators Clinton and Lieberman introduced the Family Entertainment Protection Act to prevent the sale of mature and adults-only games to minors. Some states have instituted similar laws, but the Entertainment Software Association has fought successfully to get many of those laws overturned as unconstitutional. Our view is government has no business getting involved in regulating artistic expression and creative freedom. And these laws that seek to ban sales of games based on their content are a fundamental abridgment of uh, the First Amendment. It, just tell your kid you don't want Grand Theft Auto in the house. That's enough. They understand that even though they're going to go and they're going to play it at 15 different friends' houses, my parents don't want it in the house. That's a very powerful message. Ready? Go grab it. Of course, not all kids play video games filled with devastation and destruction. This little guy created a game that's different and became a hero for it. Uh, Yay, sword! Coming up, when a kid's life isn't all fun and games... You can't give up. Video games that can save lives. Next, when playing to win continues.